hey guys welcome to another driving test video so this was a driving test at Bramley driving test center on the 31st of October 2022 and the test took place at 1 35 in the afternoon so this driving test was a pass with four driving faults so let's watch the video and see what we can learn from this driving test so i will be pointing out the driving faults when we get to that point in the video and what i'll also be doing is including links to other driving tests where similar faults has occurred but then the the outcome was different say for example in this test now a situation where there's been a minor fault given but then on the other test which the link would have been included either in the description box or um, linked on the top of the video at that point would have been maybe a situation where that same thing occurred but then a serious fault was given in that video so just so you can see an idea of how two things can come out or sorry how one mistake can happen in two different driving tests and then you get two different outcomes in terms of whether it's a minor fault or a serious fault given in those situations So positioning at this junction was very good. As you can see, she's well positioned more to the left of the center line, thereby leaving enough space on the left, maybe in case there might be a cyclist or motorbike trying to squeeze into turn left. If the road is not big enough, then you don't need to worry about these things. But remember, as long as you've got into the habit of positioning properly whenever you're turning at junction, if it's to the left, then to your left if it's to the right then just to the left of the center line but remember though if you're turning into a very narrow road and you've got a sharp edging towards you you might want to keep yourself a little bit away from that cab so in those situations maybe centering into your lane might be better for you to avoid hitting the curb when you're turning left so because there's no new speed limit sign before turning into this road or after turning at the entrance of this road this means that the speed limit on Bontash lane which is the previous road applies on this same road now this would be the same thing with um every road you turn into so this road at this point remains 30 miles per hour but then remember that your speed should be according to the situation on the road so 30 miles per hour is the maximum you should be doing on this road if the road was safe enough for that but that does not mean that you have to be doing 30 i mean i often encourage my learners to be maybe two miles per hour below the speed limit so that you don't have to worry about going too fast because then a lot of the time even one miles an hour above the speed limit becomes a worry for a learner driver and you start monitoring your speedometer more than you should be worrying about
Right, so as you would see, that was a good parallel parking there. However, though, she got one minor fault at this point. And this was because she tried moving off while the car was still in reverse. So if you watch the replay, you'd notice that the car rolled back and then stopped. And that was because she didn't change the gear to drive. So keep this in mind when you finish your parking or your maneuvers, secure your car, put it into park so that you don't forget to then remove it from reverse. Had it been that someone was behind her when this happened, that could have been a different result. So, um, she got a second minor fault for pulling up on the left here. So, the examiner said she hadn't pulled up close enough to the pavement, which you can see from the camera. And the examiner also mentioned that she had pulled up right in front of someone's driveway. Now, clearly I can understand because there was quite a lot of space, as you can see, both in front and behind. And you could just move forward. So, keep in mind... If this was the case, there is enough space, don't stop in front of someone else's driveway. Unless if there wasn't space, which sometimes the examiner might say to you not to worry about the driveway because you wouldn't be waiting there for long anyways. But if that's not the case, then use the space ahead of you and don't block driveways unnecessarily. Remember that when you see vehicles signaling to turn left, keep in mind their speed. If the speed is not reducing, then that might just be that that signal is forgotten or they're taking a different road. As you saw there, the Range Rover was actually taking the second road on the left. But because these junctions are close by, it is common for drivers to signal before that road you're coming out from. So keep this in mind, watch their speed and make sure they're slowing down to confirm that they're actually turning before you move out. Now she got another minor fault for stopping in the road here without using that protected box for vehicles turning right. So remember to use these boxes no matter how little they are. Unless of course if there is hazard protruding into that lane, then that would be fair enough. If that bus was coming quite close enough to that lane, then it would have been understandable. But that bus actually was remaining in its lane. So I've had a test once as well what someone was actually given a serious fault for doing this thing twice. So keep it in mind, use the box for vehicles turning right, no matter how small, as long as it is safe to go into that box at that time. The examiner also mentioned that he only marked this as a driving fault because he could see that she actually wanted to go straight through but then unfortunately there was a car at the junction so just because of that intention that she wasn't expecting that she was going to be stopping there which is why she didn't make attempt to go into that box now what would have happened if the examiner wasn't able to interpret your intention at that point which is really what saved her so keep this in mind and this is where of course if it was interpreted differently by someone else who was probably not thinking in your mind then you can't blame them for failing you so just use the box regardless what the case is whether you're going to stop or not this is why you should always intend that you might be stopping anyways so that you can position yourself where you need to
so she's coming to pull up on the left here again now this time around right in front of a driveway again but what is different at this situation now is that if she had gone away from this driveway she would have been parked right opposite this parked cars on the right which would have then been blocking traffic from passing so in this case it is actually okay what she had done now remember what i said earlier on if it was not necessary don't block someone's driveway so keep these things in mind remember that everything should be based on the situation and you should be thinking of the situations around you so be aware of your surroundings when you're making your decisions So this time around, she has parked opposite another parked vehicle, but the examiner hasn't given any driving fault for this. Now, keep in mind, there is a space ahead that can be moved into just after the driveway. 
But this is what I do say because examiners can mark a bit differently based on something. Some people would mark you just based on principles, while some people would mark you based on that same principle, but then along with the situation at that time and how you've dealt with it or the effect that has on people around you. So I'll give an example. Like now, one examiner can mark you for doing something wrong right so because the principle says you shouldn't do it while another examiner might mark you based on the same principle but then consider maybe the impact that has really had on the surrounding vehicle so if it's a serious one or not or if it's a minor one because i mean sometimes examiners would just you know warn you and advise you on things that you've done wrong and tell you to keep that in mind when you drive where i've also seen situations where another examiner would just fail you for that same situation just because you've done it and you shouldn't be doing it so this is what i mean so keep these things in mind as well you may feel bad about it you might get angry about it but at the end of the day it is their job and that's how they've read the situation so it's just like two different judges um on same similar cases but two different sentencing by two different judges so if that makes sense so yeah so be be careful just learn from it and move on and you know like i often would say we go back again and be better One common mistake um, learners make when I take them through this route and tell them to turn right after the bridge ahead is signaling right just before they get to this traffic light. Remember that there is a right turn before the bridge, but the instruction you've been given is to turn right after the bridge. So there's another traffic light after this traffic light. And if you're signaling right here, you're giving a wrong signal. And of course, some people would miss the instruction totally and try to turn right at this traffic light. So remember, you're turning right at the second traffic light or after the bridge. So keep this in mind. I mean, listen out for your instruction, either through the sat nav or whatever the, the examiner directs you to do. So, yep.
Don't stop if the light ahead changes while you're at this position. You need to complete the turn. You have already gone through it while it was at green. And if you stop, you will now be blocking traffic from the right when your light changes to green. When turning left on this road, consider vehicles approaching from your left as well as the road is really narrow and your car is going to go slightly over the center line as you turn to avoid the curb. Now remember that you don't want to be forcing or causing them to slow down or stop unnecessarily. So watch their distance, watch their speed. If they're close by and will be getting there at the same time about when your face is going to go into that lane, then consider waiting. Very often learners would miss the road on the left at this roundabout when you're approaching from this side. Now remember that second exit is straight ahead of you. You do not need to change lane to the right lane. You've got the road on the left there and that is your first exit. Don't make that mistake. It is very common. Your second exit is straight ahead. Only signal once you get to the first exit to exit at the second exit. And if you've made the mistake by changing into the right lane, then don't try to change back to the left lane just continue in the right lane go back around the roundabout and then come back to exit where you should have exited in the first place don't forget go back around don't try to change lane it would have been too late that right lane is for those going into the third exit and back around
so at this point they are now coming back to the test center now i hope that you have seen the mistakes on this test now four minor faults one or two of them that have actually been given as a serious fault in another test because it is obviously based on the situation at the time a different examiner you know so all these things comes into play everyone would be interpreting things according to what they see and how they feel the situation was dealt with so keep this in mind no one um, mistake gets the same um, interpretation or should i say the same outcome so don't do things based on the fact that maybe someone did it and got away with it so you might as well get away with it doesn't work like that watching the video is simple but sitting in the car is a different experience so how the examiner feels is going to be different from maybe what you see in the video so this is just a guide i hope you can see some of the um the test route see what the road looks like which is really the most um, important reason for these videos in the first place it's to give people who have no idea of what the road looks like the opportunity i'm saying this because some people say i prefer the dash cam videos but i also do it gives you a good view of the driver but this is really not the whole point of these videos this is to show someone um, not the driver's view but what the area looks like so call it a bird's eye view so that's the whole point don't forget if you find these videos useful click the like button um, share the video if you find it helpful and maybe might help someone else and don't forget if you're watching these videos and you still haven't subscribed yet i would really appreciate a subscription it would really help the channel and of course it would help my effort so yep I hope you had fun watching this if you haven't probably increased your nervousness <laughs> so um yep yeah, i'll see you guys in the next video remember click the like button share and subscribe so this was a pass and it was a good one so first time first attempt and four minor thoughts so that was good so best of luck with your own lesson and i wish you all the best with your driving test if you've got it coming soon or if you've got it a few months away or a few weeks away so stay safe on the road be safe and see you in the next video